The movie begins with a seemingly ordinary day as we see Sarah and her young son embarking on a mother-son outing. They are headed to the cinema, having been dropped off by Sarah's husband, Brad. Their current experience is enjoyable, but little do they know that their journey home will mark the beginning of a horrifying ordeal. After the movie, Sarah and her son decide to take a taxi for their return home. The ride starts uneventfully, but Sarah's sense of security quickly shatters when she realizes that the taxi, driven by a man named Bob, is deviating from the intended route. Panic sets in as she notices they've missed their exit. Frantically, she urges Bob to pull over, but her pleas fall on deaf ears. In a desperate attempt to seek help, Sarah tries to contact her husband, but to her dismay, she can't get through to him. Her fear escalates as Bob, silent and unyielding, continues to drive to an unknown destination. Eventually, they arrive at a desolate house in a remote area, far from any signs of civilization. The horror intensifies when Bob forcefully drags Sarah into the house, leaving her terrified son alone and bewildered in the car. The boy, paralyzed with fear, hears his mother's screams from inside the house. After what feels like an eternity, Bob returns to the car and drags the young boy inside as well. In a mix of fear and hope, the boy tearfully asks Bob about his mother's whereabouts. The chilling response he receives is that she is never coming back. It becomes painfully clear that Bob is not just a taxi driver, he is a cold-blooded, psychopathic serial killer, preying on women in the city, kidnapping them, and bringing them to his secluded house to commit unspeakable acts before ending their lives. Bob's twisted plan for the boy, whom he now calls Rabbit, is to keep him as a captive, forcing him to clean the house, serve him, and assist in burying the bodies of his victims in the cellar. To assert control and dehumanize the boy, Bob assigns him tasks and sets strict rules. Rabbit is instructed to open the door within 10 seconds of hearing the buzzer, signaling Bob's return with a new victim. He is also ordered to track the stories of missing people in the newspaper and meticulously paste them into a scrapbook. Bob sternly warns Rabbit against any thoughts of betrayal, escape, or theft, instilling a deep-seated fear in the boy. This disturbing setup marks the beginning of a harrowing tale of captivity and survival, as Rabbit navigates the perilous world that Bob has trapped him in. As the days turn into years under Bob's cruel captivity, Rabbit, now a bit older, stumbles upon a newspaper with a missing persons report featuring him and his mother. This discovery reignites a spark of hope within him, and he becomes determined to escape from Bob's clutches. Seizing an opportunity when Bob leaves for work, Rabbit attempts to flee through the attic of the house. However, his plan to escape is met with a harrowing setback. Just as Rabbit emerges from the attic, he finds Bob waiting for him outside. Overcome with panic and desperation, Rabbit screams at the top of his lungs, hoping against hope that someone might hear him and come to his rescue. But his cries for help go unanswered, as there's not a soul around to hear his desperate pleas. Faced with no other option, Rabbit begins to descend, only to be met with a barrage of rocks hurled at him by Bob. One of the rocks strikes Rabbit, causing him to collapse to the ground in pain and defeat. From this point on, Rabbit's limited freedom within the house is completely revoked. He is now constantly chained up and under strict surveillance, a prisoner in the truest sense. Time wears on, and the gruesome routine at the house becomes a horrifying normalcy. Bob continues to prey on women, subjecting them to unspeakable acts before ending their lives. After each of Bob's heinous acts, Rabbit is left with the grim task of cleaning up the aftermath and helping Bob bury the bodies, a relentless cycle of terror and despair. In a twist of fate, Bob picks up a young man and his father one day. The tension between the father and son is palpable. The father expresses his frustration and disappointment with the young man, criticizing him for his lifelong incompetence. This interaction triggers a series of flashback visions for Bob, revealing a glimpse into his own tormented past. These flashbacks show that Bob's father was abusive, providing a chilling insight into the origins of Bob's own psychopathic tendencies. This revelation adds a layer of complexity to the character of Bob, hinting at a cycle of violence and abuse that has perpetuated his monstrous behavior. In the later stages of the movie, Bob returns to his house where Rabbit, now a teenager, has been enduring a harrowing existence as his captive. 
Despite the years of captivity and manipulation, Rabbit remains resistant to Bob's twisted teachings. Bob attempts to mold Rabbit into a version of himself, trying to act as a perverse father figure while teaching him about human anatomy. However, Rabbit firmly stands his ground, making it clear to Bob that he will never succumb to killing anyone. This defiance infuriates Bob. To manipulate Rabbit further, Bob reveals a shocking truth. Rabbit's father, Brad, has remarried. This revelation is part of Bob's cruel plan to isolate Rabbit emotionally, drawing him closer and making him more susceptible to becoming a serial killer like himself. Bob leaves Rabbit alone to pore over human anatomy books, a grim educational tool in his scheme. As time passes, Rabbit is seen studying human anatomy, with Bob occasionally quizzing him to gauge his progress. In a disturbing turn of events, one of Bob's victims manages to escape his torture room, only to encounter Rabbit in the hall. The woman, covered in blood and in a state of desperation, pleads with Rabbit to help her escape. Rabbit, frozen and silent, does not respond, and the woman is eventually caught and killed by Bob. Bob, in a twisted game, forces Rabbit to guess details about his previous victims. Rabbit, having been made to frequently read stories about them, knows all too well about these unfortunate individuals. One night, while cleaning up the aftermath of another of Bob's crimes, Rabbit overhears Bob crying in his sleep. Through a flashback, it is revealed that Bob's father had forced him to commit unspeakable acts with his own mother, leaving Bob with deep psychological scars. The next day, Bob brings in a prostitute named Mary for Rabbit. Mary, heavily intoxicated, is oblivious to the danger she is in, believing she's there for a typical client encounter. However, her drunken behavior annoys Bob, and in a sudden violent act, he demonstrates the location of the carotid artery by cutting Mary's neck, killing her instantly. Rabbit is once again left to bury the body, marking her grave with a pack of cigarettes. That night, the trauma of his experiences manifests in Rabbit's nightmares as he screams in his sleep. Bob, intent on completing Rabbit's transformation into a serial killer, presents him with a yearbook and demands that he choose a victim. Rabbit initially refuses, throwing the book on the ground in defiance, but Bob, unyielding, forces Rabbit to pick up the yearbook and sternly warns him against making any noise at night. Before leaving, Bob takes a significant step. He unchains Rabbit, a move that could imply a twisted sense of trust or a new phase in Rabbit's captivity. The next day begins with Bob watching the news on television, seemingly unconcerned by the increasing number of missing women reported. Meanwhile, Rabbit, following his usual routine, updates the scrapbook with pictures of Bob's victims. Despite the growing concern among authorities, Bob smugly reveals that the police remain clueless about his heinous activities. During this mundane activity, Rabbit, driven by a mix of curiosity and horror, boldly asks Bob why he commits such atrocious acts of murder and violence. Bob, however, avoids giving a straightforward answer. As Rabbit persists with his questioning, Bob's temper flares, and he screams that all his victims are whores, a blatant untruth reflecting his distorted mindset. Feeling that Rabbit's questioning stems from physical frustration, Bob becomes convinced that the boy needs to have an intimate experience. He once again urges Rabbit to pick a girl from the yearbook. Rabbit, still hesitant and clearly disturbed by the idea, eventually succumbs to Bob's pressure and points to a girl named Angie. In a chillingly efficient manner, Bob abducts Angie and brings her back to his house, leaving her and Rabbit alone in a room. When he returns, Bob is frustrated to find that Rabbit hasn't done anything with Angie. Attempting to coax Rabbit into action, Bob consoles him, saying that it's normal to be nervous the first time. He then makes a sinister promise. If Rabbit proves himself by killing Angie, he will be allowed to leave. Angie, terrified for her life, sits in a corner of the room. In a desperate attempt to survive, she agrees to sleep with Rabbit, hoping it might lead to their escape. Rabbit, however, rejects her advance, explaining that there's no way out of their predicament. Despite his refusal, Angie, driven by fear and desperation, forces herself onto Rabbit. At that moment, Bob bursts into the room, and in a shocking turn of events, Rabbit stabs Angie in the stomach. He drags her lifeless body into the room where the corpses of previous victims are stored, a grim indicator of the horrifying reality they're trapped in. 
When Rabbit returns to Bob, he coldly requests another girl, as if embracing the role Bob has forced upon him. Bob, pleased and proud of what he perceives as Rabbit's transformation into a disciple, agrees to hunt for another girl. This moment marks a pivotal and disturbing development in Rabbit's character, as he appears to succumb to the twisted world Bob has created. Soon after, a significant change occurs in Rabbit's captivity. Bob presents Rabbit with a new set of clothes and allows him the luxury of cleaning himself, a stark contrast to his previous treatment. Moreover, Bob brings in a new chair for Rabbit, indicating that he now wants Rabbit to sit beside him, a gesture symbolizing a twisted form of camaraderie. Additionally, Bob plans to involve Rabbit more actively in his sinister activities, intending to take him along to manually select his next victim. For Rabbit, who hasn't seen the outside world in years, the prospect of leaving the house is a flood of nostalgia, especially when he sees the cab that he and his mother were abducted in. As they drive through the city in Bob's cab, Bob points out potential victims of various ages and types to Rabbit. However, Rabbit rejects each suggestion, overwhelmed by the situation. Sensing that this might be too much for Rabbit to handle on his first outing, Bob decides to head back home. During the drive, Bob mentions that he recorded a video of Rabbit and Angie on that fateful night, but hasn't watched it yet. This revelation causes Rabbit to panic and argue with Bob, insisting that the video is a private matter and shouldn't be viewed. The tension escalates when Bob discovers that Rabbit has written, Help, on the side of the cab, attempting to signal others for rescue. Enraged, Bob punches Rabbit and hastily removes the plea for help from the cab's exterior. On their way back home, Bob comes to a shocking realization. Rabbit didn't actually kill Angie. Rabbit had used his knowledge of human anatomy to stab Angie in a non-lethal spot and instructed her to play dead so Bob would believe she was deceased. Nevertheless, Angie is in dire need of medical attention as her wounds could be fatal within two days. Before leaving her, Rabbit cleverly left her with a sharp object for later use. Upon arriving home with an unconscious rabbit, Bob, unaware that Rabbit is unable to hear him, rebukes the boy and heads to the room where he believes Angie's body lies. When Rabbit regains consciousness, he arms himself and rushes into the house to save Angie. In a dramatic turn of events, Angie, who had managed to cut Bob's tendon, engages in a struggle with him. Although Bob initially gains the upper hand, Rabbit eventually overpowers him. In a climactic moment, Rabbit restrains Bob from behind and stabs him in the neck with his own knife, effectively ending the reign of terror of the psychopath. Rabbit then rescues Angie, who, against all odds, is still alive. In a final act of closure, Rabbit buries Bob next to the very victims he tormented and killed. This act symbolizes the end of a nightmarish chapter in both Rabbit and Angie's lives as they are finally free from the clutches of their captor. With the demise of Bob Rabbit, whose real name is revealed to be Tim, embarks on a quest to confront his past. He tracks down his father, Brad, and decides to visit him at his home. The timing is deep. It's Christmas, a season typically filled with family warmth and joy. Brad now lives with his new wife, Marie, and Tim's half-brother, Colin. Upon Tim's arrival, Brad initially fails to recognize him. However, as Tim starts recounting events from their shared past, Brad's memory is jogged. He feigns delight at Tim's survival, warmly embracing him and welcoming him into the household. Yet Tim's expression betrays a mix of discomfort and unresolved anguish. The joy of reunion is conspicuously absent. In a dramatic revelation, Tim confronts Brad with a chilling accusation. Brad was the orchestrator behind the abduction of Tim and his mother. Tim had unearthed a letter revealing the harrowing truth. The psychopath who murdered his mother and held him captive for years was Brad's brother. This sinister plot, Tim reveals, was part of Brad's scheme to rid himself of his family. Brad and his new wife, Marie, strongly deny these allegations, with Marie even insisting that Brad has no brother. As tensions escalate, Brad ushers Marie and Colin upstairs, attempting to isolate himself with Tim to settle the matter. The confrontation reaches a boiling point when Tim threatens to expose Brad's dark secret, 
In response, Brad physically assaults Tim, desperately trying to silence him. Marie, upon realizing the true nature of her husband, rushes to intervene but finds herself a target of Brad's aggression as well. In the ensuing struggle, Tim, driven by a mix of self-defense and years of confined rage, beats Brad to death. The gravity of the situation dawns on Marie, who quickly takes control. She orchestrates the crime scene to resemble a burglary gone wrong and instructs Colin to stay inside. Urging Tim to leave immediately, she calls the police, reporting that a burglar had killed her husband. As the movie reaches its conclusion, Tim, burdened with the weight of his actions, returns to Bob's house. With a heavy heart and a mind clouded with memories and traumas, he closes the door behind him, symbolizing a return to the only life he's known for years. Did this story spook you out? Let us know in the comments below. For more horror movie recaps, subscribe to our channel and we will see you in the next one. Fear awaits you.